Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here. Now, not to brag, but very recently, I did finally get my hands on the Nintendo Switch. I don't actually own one, but I did actually manage to play one. And blimey, 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 I'm about to tell you all about it. So yes, many of you saw the previous video, I'm sure, where I talked about my predictions and my initial feelings about the Switch after the initial presentation. Well, I did say I was going to do a follow-up video, and this is kind of that. So if you haven't seen that, maybe click that card up there. Not absolutely compulsory but you know if you want a bit of context it might help. So having played the thing now I am going to natter your little ears off about it and first of all I'm going to be talking about the hardware then I'm going to move on to the software and things like that. I'm going to be including a few sort of predictive things as well so hang about for that could be fun. So first of all the hardware wow I'm going to start off with the joy cons because those things really surprised me um in fact no let's start off sort of generally. Generally the switch is about sort of so big I know that won't mean much to you but you know it feels feels fairly comfortable in the hand, you know, there's not, it feels like maybe there should be some grips at the bottom of the Joy-Con, but you've got to take form factor and portability into account, so there's nothing down there, but again, it's nothing I don't think I couldn't get used to in, you know, a couple of hours, so it's fine, to be honest with you. Um, the actual quality of the unit itself, really, really much higher than I was anticipating. I was a little bit worried it was going to feel much more like the Wii U gamepad or the original 3DS, but that is not the case. It's got a really nice premium tactile feel to it and it does feel like that you are getting your money's worth in some regards just bear with me i'm not saying straight off the bat that it is worth 300 i'm just going to say 300 because it's 300 dollars 280 pounds so i'm just going to say 300 currency but anyway in those little joy cons you get an awful lot going on in there you've got you know sort of gyroscopes um uh, the the other thing that does motion controls the things that do motion controls what are they called accelerometers that's it it's got accelerometer in it as well um it's got all sorts of gizmos and gadgets in it and the hd rumble and all that stuff there is a lot going on in those little joy cons and they're all rounded off nicely in this really nice really sort of nice tactile shell sort of it's, it's, it's nice and matte for a start, which makes a huge difference because glossy plastic is awful, but it does feel like a nice high quality plastic. It's not off the scale, the whole thing doesn't certainly feel as uh, premium as say like an iPad or a, a high quality Android tablet, but it is up there, it's, you know, it's a nice quality device. I also really like the flexibility that the Joy-Cons give you because they're basically, as they sort of made fairly clear in the presentation, they're a Wii remote, they're a, you know, sort of physical controller, they've got the analog sticks, it's all the sort of previous controllers from Nintendo rolled into one kind of sort of basically it's I, I mentioned this in an interview with Nintendo UK um, that it's basically like a Swiss army knife and um, there's so many things you can do with it and that's really exciting with all the motion controls and it's even got the uh, it's even got the sensor so that it can sense I didn't get a chance to have a go with that but um I, d I don't see much practical use to it, but it's another thing that it's got, which is another feather in its a feather. It's another string to its bow, another feather in its cap, which is never a bad thing. The HD Rumble also really, really impressed me. It, when I, you know, first heard about it, I thought, you know, sort of, can it really be that good? But no, it really is a really lovely system. I do fear that it's not going to be implemented in many games because, you know, sort of, I don't think a lot of third-party developers are going to take the time and effort to work out all the HD rumble and what they want to do and everything like that. I think they're just going to go, ah, just do rumble, full intensity, you know, and just slap it in and make that happen whenever you, you know, shoot a gun or something like that. I don't know. That is something we're going to have to wait and see about. Um, I would like to think they would use it, but by the same token, I would totally understand if they didn't, because it's just more work for them. The Pro Controller. Now, this, for me, really is a lovely controller. I did not get that long with it, but I did play Splatoon 2 with it. I'll be talking about Splatoon 2 later on. And the controller itself feels really, again, sort of high quality, tactile. Uh, maybe not quite as high quality as the Joy-Cons. It feels maybe a little bit more plasticky, but considering the functionality, it more than makes up for it. In many ways, it's kind of like a Wii U gamepad, but without the screen. Because it's got all the gyros, the accelerometers and everything in it, which are so much better than the Wii U gamepad pad my goodness i can't even begin to tell you know how it kept sort of you would quite often veer off they weren't that accurate and things like that none of that in splatoon 2 i think i reset my camera once in the entire time i was playing it and that's just because i wanted to adjust my grip and that was it it was marvelous the triggers i fear are digital the, the it's it's a weird thing it's the same with the joy cons there's there's more movement than you would expect from a digital button 
but not enough that you do not, not as much as you'd expect from an analog so there's a bit of movement so maybe it's pressure sensitive i don't know um but i i would say on the whole they're probably digital which is a shame but you know move on it's you know not the end of the world it is a pity because you know when it comes to driving and stuff like that driving games it really does help and it would be nice but uh, I don't think it's going to be be all and end all. I also managed to have a go with the uh, Switch um, Joy-Cons on their side, you know, just using them in the sort of typical two-player thing. Um, and I have to say, they were nowhere near as uncomfortable as I anticipated. I looked at them and I thought, you know, the buttons are too far in, or if you've got the other one, then the, uh, the control stick is too far in. I think just because they are quite small, you can just sort of rest them in your hand, and it's not that big of a deal. Um, I wouldn't, you know, sort of recommend using them for long periods of time because I'm sure after a while they probably would become uncomfortable and your hands would cramp. You can get some grips for them, but even then I think maybe just, you know, sort of hold off for a bit. Um, but for just, you know, playing a bit, bit of Mario Kart, you know, you've got a couple of friends around, you don't, you know, you've got your Joy-Cons, you've got one Pro Controller, you've got you and two friends, what are you going to do? You give them a Joy-Con each and I'm sure they'll be fine with it. And you can use a Pro Controller because it's your system use it. I also managed to have a go with the um, the puppy dog controller, the uh, sort of the grip, if you like, for the Joy-Cons um, when playing Breath of the Wild, and that was really quite nice and comfortable. The um, positions of the buttons and things like that, because of the grip and everything, were a little out of place, I felt, but again, it's just a different controller. You'll get used to it, I'm sure. I know I certainly will. Um, so yeah, on the whole, nice little thing. Not really much else to say about that. If I can, just for a moment, the screen on the the switch is absolutely gorgeous it really it's so bright and clear the colors really pop it's honestly it's one of the nicest screens i've ever seen on a portable unit bar none to be honest i mean looking back at the wii u gamepad screen it's a joke by comparison it really is absolutely gorgeous not much else to say about that the 720p um, resolution isn't a big deal again you don't really see you know sort of you don't really see much difference i mean maybe slightly but i mean it's honestly you're gonna get used to it in no time at all um i imagine some people will have an issue with it and that's fine you're allowed to but i don't know i think on the whole nobody's gonna care 720 more than enough battery life battery life battery life wow now i haven't actually had a chance to really test out the battery life because i wasn't able to sit there and play the same switch because they're you know for two hours or however long you know it was until oh is it two and a half three hours they say roughly on zelda breath of the wild um i didn't obviously didn't get a chance to do that but um i do think it's not that big of a problem i think generally people now are uh, you know sort of assume that um, devices are going to have a poor battery life which is not you know sort of is not absolving it of anything you know it, it you know i think it should have a longer battery life but by the same token you know i'm used to carrying around a usb battery anyway for my phone and things like that so it's not going to be that big of a deal and you can be absolutely certain that people will release cases for the switch which have a battery pack that just sort of ha hang on the end and you know have a little plug that goes in underneath you know that's that's just going to happen it's it's inevitable so it's not an issue really i mean if it's an issue for you then sorry but it's not for me. So overall, on the hardware, the hardware itself is really, really fantastic. I think $300, 280 pounds is, that's about right for the unit. The only thing is I worry that it's gonna put off a lot of impulse buyers because there's a lot of tech going on in there, but a lot of people aren't necessarily interested in all the tech that's in it. So I think maybe if they could have released it at a lower price, it would have obviously been better for everyone, you know, on the consumer front. But I do think 280 is, it's about right for what you get. Um, again, I do think maybe it would have been better if it was cheaper, but I don't know whether they would have been able to do that. Who knows? But let's move on to the software now. 1, 2, Switch was not the first thing I played. The first thing I played was Splatoon 2, but I'm going to start with this because I surprised myself. I like 1, 2, Switch. I like the idea of it. I like the, uh, the way that it uses the Switch in unusual ways. I do not like the price. I genuinely think it should be bundled with the system. And I don't think anyone's going to really buy it because it's not bundled with the system and it's it was 50 pounds it's a standard retail price which is insane you know 40 or 50 pounds i can't remember exactly and that is that is just too much to be honest it's um 
you know, I mean, it's just a series of mini games. And if it was a party game, which it kind of is, then yeah, great, you know, um, maybe you would have an audience there. But the thing is, it's not really, because it's two player. As far as we can tell, it's only ever two player. And I don't know what kind of parties you have, but generally if I have a party where there are only two people, I consider that to be a bit of a failure. Or I just call that a quiet night in. It is a lot like Wii Sports in many, many ways. You know, it's basically showing off what the system can do in all the various bits of tech that it's got going on inside it, which is great. But it's it should be it should be free. It should come with the system, maybe as a free download or something like that. But I don't know, even if it was only for the early adopters, you know, early adopters, if you buy it and you can, you know, sort of, if you have a Switch, you can download it within the first month um, of it, you know, of its launch, you can just download one, two Switch for free. I think that would be really good. It would encourage people to go out and buy it because they know they're going to get this thing for free and they're actually going to have some software on the Switch that they can play rather than having to immediately buy another game. Bad idea. Splatoon 2, lovely 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 i really really enjoyed playing this game it's very similar as you might expect to the original splatoon visually massive improvement it doesn't really come across in the videos which is a real shame um because of you know youtube's compression algorithms and stuff like that just really clamped down on the bit right and it's a real shame because it is a gorgeous game it even looks really good on the um on the switch screen which is apparently exactly the same for breath of the wild although i didn't see that because i was i was rather rushed which is why i didn't get to play every game but as far as as the gameplay goes it's very similar to the original splatoon but it does have a lot more going on it's a lot of things have been stripped out like apparently i'm not entirely sure about this all of the previous special abilities like you know ink zooka and stuff like that apparently they're all gone and they're all being replaced which is an interesting move i mean it does sort of mean that splatoon you know splatoon one if you like is um is still sort of viable in many ways people may go back to it and splatoon 2 is a bit more of a slightly different entity but you know, I think maybe it's for the best, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I will miss things like the Kraken, but you know, move on. You know, they've got some really good things like the ink jet where you fly up, you can go up and you can go over into the enemy spawn. It's insane. Even if there are, you know, insurmountable obstacles, which um, there were in the map that I played, uh, but then you don't land there when it ends, it sends you back to where you started it, which is an interesting little thing that uh, prevents people from being really, really nasty on Splatoon, so good they're thinking. Breath of the Wild. I can't wait to play even more of it. I was a little bit disappointed that the build I played was um, very similar, if not identical, to the build I played before on the Wii U. But even so, you know, it was great to just be able to play a bit more of it and, uh, you know, just get a better feel for it, see how it performs on the Switch. It performs really rather well. It is, again, an old build, but it did have a few moments of slowdown and things like that, which I hope are not in the final product, but overall the Switch really did seem to handle Breath of the Wild far better than the Wii U did, so top marks. I didn't actually get to play anything different in Breath of the Wild, so I can't really talk much more about that, but it's good. Next game, ARMS. Yes, I played ARMS, and I must admit when I saw ARMS first being revealed I thought, What's the point in arms, to be honest with you? I thought it was just a little bit of a, you know, sort of a boxing game where you do, you know, motion controls and stuff like that. It would be forgettable, move on. But no, I had a go at it and I was really genuinely pleasantly surprised. I don't know, you know, sort of what kind of longevity it'll have, but there was a lot more going on than I anticipated. And I think it is a really rather nice game. I hope there's more to it than just the, you know, sort of fighting against CPUs or, you know, another player and things like that. And apparently the final game will have button controls. I read that on the internet and uh, I don't think... <laughs> Clarification, I did read it on the internet, but I have also heard from other sources that this is true. It will have button controls when it comes out, so it will have that as well. But I think the motion controls are going to be a lot of fun as well. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun with them. They were very, very responsive like, you know, sort of you think about boxing games on the Wii U where it was just basically just randomly flailing and things like that and any vague movement was good enough. No, 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 nothing like that in arms. Um, you have to be really quite precise, you know, with your movements, things like that. If you want to move left and right, you've got to tilt like that and you've got to do them both at the same time. Otherwise, it sort of goes a bit weird. Um, you've got to do them both. And um, if you want to jump and things like that, it's just a simple button press. But when you do the punches, you've got to really, you know, you punch forward like that. And if you punch straight, which is a hard thing to do, actually, I found out. If you punch straight like that, you'll do a straight shot. 
but you can curve like that, you can curve. And literally by punching like that on screen, it'll curve and it... Honestly, it's really, really good and um, I really want to talk more about it, but I also want to play more of it before I do that, so uh, let's move on to the next game. And it just so happens to be the final game that I've got on the list, Snipper Clips. Now, I must admit I did not get a chance to play this game. There was lots of queuing, not that a lot of time there, and I had to prioritise what games I played, and I thought Snipper Clips... I won't bother with that, you know, it doesn't seem that interesting. I wish I'd had a go on it now because I've seen some gameplay footage, I saw the treehouse and everything, and I think it is genuinely a really lovely looking game. Again, I haven't played it so I can't speak absolute volumes per se, but yeah, no, I think it's a really lovely idea. Um, I have a feeling it's unfortunately going to get overshadowed by all the other games because, you know, it's one of those titles where... <laughs> I mean, I did it myself. I looked at it and I thought, I'm not going to bother with that. And um, it's a shame because you really should. It's a really interesting looking game. And I'm so annoyed with myself that I didn't get to have a go at it. But, you know, live and learn. So what do I like about the Switch and what are my main concerns? Well, I talked a lot about what I like just now, but uh, I do have a few concerns and they are primarily software based. Um, I have a worry that there's not enough third party support at the moment. We don't know what's, you know, what's going to come out in the coming weeks and months and things like that. Um, I'm also worried about the launch lineup, you know, because there aren't that many titles, certainly not coming from Nintendo and one of them being 1-2 Switch, which again should be a pack in. You know, when it comes to the hardware, I'm sold, absolutely sold. The only thing I worry about is the software. Is um, It's just things, again, like I said, I've basically said it, you know, the launch lineup, I'm worried about that. And um, the thing with the online, um, the online service where they said, you know, you get a free SNES or NES game with added multiplayer every month. Uh, the only thing is that's only free to play for that month and then you can't play anymore, which I think is a really, really bad thing. And um, that should be something they definitely address. Um, I do like the idea of the additional multiplayer, but again, you lose it after a month, really, when you've got Xbox Live and uh, PlayStation Network offering a free, fully-fledged game, not an old, you know, sort of virtual console title, and you get to keep it, you know, every month, you know, it's, come on, they, it, it, I, I worry that they're, you know, overvaluing their old titles. Because don't get me wrong, I love the old SNES and NES games, and, you know, added multiplayer online is a great idea, but... I just think that they're, you know, they're, they think, oh, everyone, you know, will be happy with this and then we'll give them a trial. You know, when they've paid for a service, we'll let them have a trial for a month and then if they like, they can buy it afterwards. I think that's how it works, but I don't know. Do not hold me to it. Um, which I think is really overvaluing the old titles because they're great, but if people want to buy them, they'll buy them. But we bought them so many times before. And, you know, it just sort of feels like it's tantalizing, you know, sort of, oh, you've paid for our online service, well done. Now, here, you know, sort of have, have a sample of something, but you can't keep it. It just feels very, very cheeky. But we still don't know the full details, so who knows, maybe things will change, maybe they'll, you know, <laughs> actively change their mind. Maybe we've got the wrong end of the stick, who knows, we will find out in time. But as, as it comes for the launch, I am worried, but by the same token, I was recently informed by my colleague and did a bit of research into this. The SNES, one of the, or the SNES, or the Super NES, or whatever you want to call it, the, um, it, it launched in Japan, the first launch, with a grand total of two games. <laughs> it relaunched, you know, when it launched in North America, it had a grand total of five games, and, you know, it's one of the most revered systems ever, so... That kind of takes the sting out of it. I'm still worried about it, I really am. Um, but it does take the edge off. Another thing, the Wii U launched in the US first before anywhere else, I don't know why they did that. And that launched with, um, I just had to read my notes, 34 games, 34, and that went so there's hope yet, but we'll have to just wait and see what happens, and uh, who knows, who knows what tomorrow will bring, who knows what other new games will be announced in the time, you know, from when this goes out to the time that you watch it, maybe, if you're not watching it the day it goes out, who knows, who knows what's happened, maybe somebody's looking back on this as an archive of all the things that everybody got wrong when it came to the launch of the Nintendo Switch, I don't know, but all I know is thank you so much for watching, if you like this video, then why don't you... Leave a comment down below about your opinions on this matter. If you have played it, even better. If not, just give your general thoughts and then click that subscribe button. 
because I've got to get it in somehow. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>